everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of The Latest Thread. We're glad to have you. Um, the topic we're going to discuss this week is working with rulers and templates, because I think it's kind of one of those things that everyone should learn how to do. Not everyone loves it, though. Um, so I think kind of we'll start out that way and talk about each of our kind of feelings on roller work. You know, do you love it, hate it? Um, and I think another thing that would be good to talk about is how hard was it? You know, when you learned how to use them, was it, did you find it hard or not? Only on the ruler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll go since I'm already talking. Um, I, I don't like the, to this day, I still don't like the concentration level I have to use with a ruler. So it's, it's almost like left brain stuff to me. Like I really have to pay attention and concentrate and not think about anything else. Cause if I do, I just flip that little ruler just a smidge and it's not straight. <laughs> Why use a ruler if you're not gonna stitch straight? <laughs> so. Yeah, it was hard learning because I have broken many a ruler with that hopping foot just by not paying attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're stitching along, you look up, and when you look up, your hand turns and the ruler goes boom. So there's a lot that have bitten edges. <laughs> but now it's good. I just have to concentrate. They have scars, and scars are stories, right? <laughs> <laughs> and some have shattered in half. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a huge bin of rulers that I don't even use anymore. But when I go to teach somewhere, I take them with me um, just so people can be like, okay, what did you buy? And what did you spend your money on that you, that you liked and you don't like kind of thing? Because there are, I have a ton. I probably have more that I don't use than more that I use. Do you find that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You should have a ruler smaller. Yeah. But I, I can't get rid of them. No. Oh, I can I have to. <laughs> I have to keep them. <laughs> like the just ones you buy that have no directions and then you get home and you're just like, I don't know how to do what they did. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, to me, I like ruler of work because I like the precision that you can achieve with the ruler. It's kind of like uh, training wheels on a bicycle. You know, you, you kind of feel secure when you're using a ruler that it's exactly going to end up well, mostly, not always. But, you know, more likely than not, you're gonna, you know, be more precise with a ruler. And, you know, I probably go to the other extreme and use a ruler when maybe other people would not use a ruler to, yes, Jody, I was talking about you, <laughs> teasing me about, you know, using rulers when maybe it's not warranted. But yeah, um, the level of difficulty, again, it depends on what type of ruler it is, or also, you know, what the design is. Um, you know, if you have to turn your ruler constantly you know then that's more difficult to know how to line it up to get that precision so i do love ruler work and use it a lot did you find it hard to learn not really because you know i just you know took my time a lot and just went slowly so i found the straight lines easier to learn than the curves oh sure like the, cur yeah. the curves were just like you would, you know, be going around nicely and then just whoosh off into the. And there's a yeah. of illusion that happens when you're using curves. Mm -hmm. Hitting that quarter inch mark, you know. Yeah. Getting them lined up properly. Right. Yeah. My only error is operator error. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon, how about you? Uh, was it difficult? Yeah, the, the curves were for sure. Um, I think one of the things I liked about the ruler work, like when I first learned how to do it, was the fact that I could divide the space um, neatly because it was always so intimidating to look at this big space and go, what do I do in here? Even if the space is only like five or six inches big, to me it was at, the, at that time, 
it was like, well, what do, what do I do in here? And the, the rulers just gave the opportunity to put a couple of curves or a line somewhere that it was like, okay, now the space is only this big. And so I only have to think about this much space. And so I think it was like a, just this huge realization of this freedom that I had now to like, oh, I can, I can totally do whatever I want in this space. And I didn't, I wasn't scared so much when the spaces were smaller. So, but yeah, I struggled with the curves. Um, and I ended up, um, I think nowadays you can buy rulers that have like some 3M tape or grip tape on the back, but I ended up putting like, um, I mean, do you guys have 505 mm -hmm. in the U S okay. So, um, I ended up putting 505 on the back of some of my curved rulers, like the circles, because they would just slide around on the fabric so much and it would just help them stay in place. So but it, it depends though. Like if I'm doing tiny little piano keys. I want that slide on my, on my specialty rulers. I want that stick. You know? Right, but that's a straight line. Yeah. But if right. I, I would never put that on my straight edge ruler, but it was on the curves because your angle of pressure is changing, right? So that's why I needed that extra grip. But yeah, I like to be able to slide my straight edge ruler for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I love roller work now. I despised it until probably about five years ago. It was not my thing in any way. I resisted. I was not, I don't need a ruler, you know? Um, but when I learned it, and it was hard for me to learn because I want it to be where it, want, it needs to be. And I couldn't do it. I just couldn't, because I'm trying, you know, you watch videos and people are just like, oh, effortlessly just moving it and they're straight and I'm like, why i'm pressing too hard i can't even move the stinking machine it right. was just really it took a long time to grasp how it worked yeah. um and i'm the opposite i i want that i use the sticky things on every single ruler like to the extreme like i'll have three or four on the back because they still move they're not that sticky but i want them to stay and I think that's why I love it so much. I've made it, it's a challenge. So I love the challenge to myself of making them be really precise. Curves are, the curved rollers, yeah, they're weird with that, trying to get, it, it doesn't look right. Even now, I don't do curved rollers very much because it just, <laughs> it, it just, yeah, my brain works in straight lines mostly. Even angles are weird for me, so I kind of stick to not so much with the curves. Um, so I'm gonna guess that we all have some favorite rulers. Like, so you know, if you go to quilt to quilt, they're probably the same handful that you always find on your. Even though we all have, you know a lot of rulers <laughs> two different straight edges sure <laughs> right right um so which ones do you find yourself you know they're just always there you know or you those are the ones that you grab all the time ava you go <laughs> you were going first earlier doesn't matter <laughs> you don't like to keep it too structured yeah <laughs> that's rules <laughs> Well, you know, speaking of straight edge ruler, I have this ruler. It's a, you know, small straight edge. I have that though in three sizes. But the reason why I like the little one the most is because, you know, it's six inches. So it fits in quite a few blocks to divide up. But I also use it to go around applique because it's so small. I can quickly maneuver because again, I'm a little bit anal, so I must use a ruler, not to measure anything, but to guide my hopping foot along. I can't do it freehand because I don't want to go into the applique because I'm rushing. So, you know, and I also like the, um, it has horizontal and vertical lines. So if I'm doing the piano keys or something like that, I can line the longer one up, you know, on the seam with the horizontal lines and make sure that I'm staying straight. Again, to me, ruler work is about precision. So that's what I like to use. 
Sharon? Okay. Um, I have two that are my absolute go-to, and um, here they are. You can see them. Um, my, you know, it's interesting what you were saying about the size, Ava, because I had a six inch ruler and a 12 inch ruler for a long time when I first learned, was learning. And I always found the six inch was just not enough. And the 12 inches was just too long and like in my way. And so I settled on a nine inch because I just found that it pretty much, I rarely have to pull out my 12 inch ruler anymore. Um, and just like you, I like to have the markings. I like to have the horizontal and vertical mm -hmm. markings. Uh, and it also has 45 and 60 on both sides. Um, and I, I think that's something that people can be intimidated by when they look at a ruler and see a ton of markings on them and they think, I just want to keep it simple and have a couple markings and that's fine to learn. But I found the more ruler work I did, the more I appreciated the extra lines because the more lines that are on the ruler, the less marking I had to do on the quilt. Mm -hmm. So it was just a huge time saver and, and just super convenient to have. There. And it has a curve on the one side. Mm -hmm. So it's got a nice... Um, well, I'm getting back to what you were saying. Your preference is the nine inch, whereas my preference, you know, I said I had three sizes and there's a 10 inch one also. And it's important to mention too, when we choose our rulers, you know, we have to make sure we all are different sizes and have different size hands. So mm -hmm. we want to be able to apply enough pressure without having to scooch the ruler yeah. you know, or our hands. So, you know, what I have big hands, so the 12 inch may be okay for you, but you being much smaller, it may just be, you know, you're defeating the purpose by using a ruler that's too big because the precision is often not there. So that's mm -hmm. important to remember when choosing our rulers. Yeah, and, and I noticed like my six inch ruler that I did start with was only two inches wide. <clears throat> and I just didn't find it. It was enough like foot space. And so for, this one is three inches. So I have a little bit more room to put my hand flat. And I'm, if I'm doing a lot of ruler work, you can, I find that my hands would get really tired if my fingers were up all the time. So I have room to put my, mm -hmm. so the other favorite one that I have is, um, it's made by the same gal. Um, but what I like about it is the curve is the same on both sides. And I don't just do like it for doing arcs. I use them for doing like ditching around like vines and, and things like that. So yeah, I, those are, those are my, definitely my two standby. The, the, that one has a little mini version of it as well. So if you're doing smaller work, then I can just switch to a smaller, smaller ruler. So those are always by, by my side. I'll go. Um, my favorite rulers, I actually designed, and this is my very favorite, which is eight inches to use all the time, but I don't like to mark. I just like to make tick marks. So then I have it in 12 too, so that I can put it down and just line up my tick marks as I go. But I don't know. I, I designed it cause I'm lazy and I always want a curve and a straight edge cause I use it on every quilt. So I'm like, why don't I have one ruler that has a curve and straight edge? <laughs> So I did that and I mean, it's got straight lines and, and grid and echo arcs and 10 degree angles. So yeah, there's a lot of marking on it, but it's like 90% of what I do on every quilt. So mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. it. <laughs> it all in one. Those all are the best ones, you know, when they have, um, you know, you only need one. Um, mine are mostly just, so the, this is my absolute favorite, right? Oh, so I love that one. Is the ruler that I learned to stitch, do ruler work with. And so I'm someone that has a real, like, this is it. This is it. Yes, I have 12 to 15 other straight ones, but this is the one I grab because it, I don't know why. You know, it has this big strip on the whole back and it's just my security thing. I know I can operate this baby. Good. <laughs> um, and the, I'm the same. I, I like a smaller one, and this one's like eight, I want to say. And I do have this one that I use a lot because what, sometimes you can't see the lines, and the yellow ones make it really nice. But the and then I have oh, I had yours here, Karen, too. The curve 
Like I said, though, I'm not a huge curve stitcher. And then I use this little or curvy one a That's lot. That's deep. That too. But these are my two absolute, these two, every single quilt. And they're super tiny. And I love tiny rulers because I want my hand like over oh. it. Like, yeah. So I just, you know, I think everyone has, the, you know, and I'm weird because if I, I grow attached to things, I guess. This is it. You know, I do have tons of other ones and it's great because if you get someone's quilt in and they have some odd arc that, yeah, it's not something I stitch on my own stuff often, but you know, you gotta have rulers to do whatever comes your way, you know? Um, so how about templates? Actual shapes and things? <laughs> for me I don't have a lot of those I have uh circles and you know how when you start and you go to a show and you see all those rulers right and you buy them and then you bring them home and I found out pretty quickly that it was really hard for me to use those circles that were um on the outside you know, you get like, well, I'm right-handed. So when I get like over to like three o'clock, I can't keep it on there. So what I discovered is that I prefer to stitch a shape inside. So I have something to press out on. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, if it's, you know, so there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these things I like the best because you can choose this. I mean, see, yeah. I, I know we all bought them, didn't we? At the same every, time. I, I don't know. We bought every size there was. Yeah. Yep. This I was <laughs> Yeah. I would have to say is my favorite because you can do like so obviously I'm right handed. I hold my ruler with my left. So I can always keep my hand on the left. You don't have to do that weird, you know, how you have to move your hands. And yeah. So for me, that's kind of the only templates I really use. I don't have it. Oh no, I have Karen's OG rulers and I do use those because the curve is a good curve. If you mark a freehand shape, then you can get some oddball, you know, angles. Yeah. I'll, I'll go next. <laughs> cause it's the same rulers. <laughs> yeah. The circles are my favorite cause they're so easy to use. And then OGs. That's what Jody was talking about, the OGs. And I use these two. I have, there's three sizes, two, four, and six. And I use two and four, like, on almost everything. And not even just for the full OG shape. Like, sometimes it's just that upper arc, because it's got a nice curve to it. Mm -hmm. and the only other favorite tool I have is this little multi-shape thing. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. And I really like, and look, I have I have Jody's dots on there, <laughs> grippy dots, because I don't want this one to move. But I like this, and I think it's in one of my inspiration pictures, because it makes like a little coil. And if you overlap it, it turns into almost like a chain. Like a spirograph. Kind of like a spirograph. Kind of. Kind of. And that one comes, I think, in two different sizes. It comes in three sizes. I have all of them, but that's the yeah. one I have yeah. the most. Yeah, that little one. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm only going to show one. I don't want to take up too much time. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of my favorites, I hope you can see it, is mm -hmm. eh, this one. It has the circles, you know, and it's like a puzzle. You can take it apart in order to get your foot in. And these are very small circles. They range from one half of an inch to one inch. So by the time you put your, you know, foot in, you know, it seems kind of weird to use a template for such small circles. However, getting back to what I was saying earlier, you know, if I, if I do pebbles, I wouldn't use it because pebbles are organic, you know, so, but if I want to do pearls, I like them to be very precise and consistent depending on what, you know, quilt they go on. So 
I will take the time and you know this I like this because it has the center line. I don't think you can see it, but it has a center line. So I'll mark, you know, a line, let's say in my sashing, I just dash a center line. And then I don't have to think, you know, I can just easily um move along and what i like about this particular one because i've tried others that are the same concept and some of those when you get to where it interlocks as the puzzle piece you can definitely feel the bump and then you have a little wiggle and it's no longer precise pearl so <laughs> But this one here, you can seamlessly literally go around there and not have any issues. So that's my favorite for that. And it's funny because I use that same one, but totally different. So I use only half of it and I stitch one half and then I move it and stitch the other half. Because yeah. I don't like that, having that feeling that I need to keep it in there. I don't know, it's weird. <clears throat> I but then if I was to use mm -hmm. if I was to use it like you, Jody, clearly that's an option, but I would be worried that I'm no longer lined up and now it's not a perfect circle. Yeah. And see, so, yeah. I don't put the line. I don't like to follow any line. <laughs> I like a little free hand. So I just yeah. But that's why we're all different. It's okay. Yeah. If I want to be anal, I can be, and you don't have to be. So I like, um, we've shown different styles of those rulers with the circles inside. And I think this was the ruler that other than like the straight edge and the curve was like, oh, I can do so much more, right? Because, and then when I discovered this one, I put rows of pearls in everything. <laughs> Every little sashing had a perfect row of pearls. And I'm opposite to Jody, where I find it harder to do the circle on the inside than to do the circle on the outside. Um, so I actually picked up, and I saved up for this because this broke my, my bank when I was first learning, was a set of these that go from two inches all the way up to four, 14 inches. And um, sorry, my cat is really being a brat. Um, and I really like them because they have the crosshairs marked and on the diagonal as well. So I can line them up with spaces in the block. So if I just wanted to do an arc in one part, I could line the crosshairs up with this, with the seams. Um, and so for me, yeah, stitching on the outside was definitely easier than the, than the inside. But when I think of template, I think of like something you would draw with first. That's what I think of. Um, so I, I had a need for a bunch of different shapes um, a couple of years ago and I had my husband make them for me. So I have like um, diamonds and hexagons and like also curls and things that I can use for feather spines and things that I can just, okay, it's just kind of like a ruler treatment because you're putting in a defined neat shape and then you can add your freehand to it. Um, I just found it was everything was more symmetrical or you know what I mean? Like it's, 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 um, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's just, a, it's a neater look. Like it's a neater finish when you have something that you can mark and you add your stuff to it. We should do another episode on our drawing templates. Cause mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what I had envisioned when we were talking about templates was, was that, but, um, uh, well, yeah, yeah it is, because it's a really, to me, it, I like them too, because it's the easiest way, I think, and the fastest way to mark what you want to stitch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for me, because I hear you guys a lot all saying about the markings on the rollers and stuff, and I would prefer them that not have anything on there. there. I don't even look at them at all. But you draw, you mark on your quilt. I mark everything. I want to just mark it on there and not think in any way and line anything up except the needle on the line and the roller to keep it there, I guess. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah, we should do another episode on drawing, drawing templates. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. So we covered all the templates, right? I think so. Okay.
So this is probably a good time for us to take a little break. And when we come back, we can share some ruler work and template work pictures. See you then. back everyone hope you're ready because we're gonna have a look at some gorgeous ruler quilting now okay so this one um that was a customer quilt and i just did a couple different things with rulers this is just a detail shot but if you look in between the applique blocks i did curve cross hatch obviously with a curved ruler Mm -hmm. And the thing to remember when you do the curved rulers and ask me why I'm talking about that, because when you start on one side, let's say the left hand side to do your curve, you always have to do it from the left side, because if not, it looks rather funky. So I'd like to do the curve cross hatch a lot you know, depending on what quilt it is. But I also like, as you see in the bottom right um, corner, the block, you know, just add some straight lines, you know, to embellish a block. You know, I, I mean, what do you do in there? So I, a lot of times, do some weird configurations with um, the straight ruler and then did an echo quilting with the circle ruler around the block to frame it in. The, the line quilting in the flower applique looks like seashells. Yeah. yeah. And there's just a close up of the whole thing. And again, the, you know, there's some other blocks where I added the straight line quilting in there because it's easy and it adds something to it. And this was also a custom quilt and I did the square spiral in the um, cream colored blocks. And yes, I used that um, puzzle um, circle ruler to do the pearls in the stars and you know when you I mean something like that to me if you start doing ruler work and that's the main focus of the quilt then I think it truly in order to get the crisp look it all has to be precise and maybe that's just in my head where I'm trying to do that but, you know, it works for me, so um, I'd like to try I to like everything. Nice. In the green star, I love how it looks like the star is almost morphing into the spiral. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then another diamond, um, like, straight line configuration. At first, I thought, ah, is that going to be too much because it's so different? But I ended up liking it. Sometimes you have to just go for what you see in your head and it doesn't always yeah. work out. But hey, if you don't try, you don't know what works together. So I think that's I one of my favorite ones that I've seen of yours, Ava. Thank you. Me, mine too, actually. <laughs> I think there's a big picture of it. Oh, there maybe isn't. No, I don't think I edited. Well, if anybody wants to see the full quilt, they can go to your page, right? That is correct. <laughs> go to my Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, use the same puzzle circle ruler again. Can you tell I love it? I do. 
you know, and then use the curve ruler to do um, the center motif and then echo around it and add it to straight lines. I mean, I truly love ruler work for the fact that um, it just looks really crisp. And yeah, I, I like how you always, with ruler work, you get that secondary design almost every time, you know. Yeah. And I like the way you did the pearls around the frame of it, because then if somebody's just learning to use that kind of a ruler to begin with, they don't have to worry about everything intersecting perfectly in each corner. Yeah, I wanted that offset look to add to the frame, but you're right, Sharon, because, you know, if you're doing that in a sashing and you have to consider the corners, you know, you either have to do the math or you have to figure out, you know, is it okay if they overlap in the corner, which certainly it is, you know, so you have options, but in that case, you truly have to give it some thought. And it makes that um, ruler a little bit less intimidating to use when you know you can be a little bit less structured, right? Yep. And again, Jody was talking about, you know, pre-marking every, or a lot of her, you know, lines before she quilts. And on this particular quilt, I did the same thing. Um, because there's so many lines and then there's different spacing. It's really important that, you know, it's really truly symmetrical that everything, you know, as you look across lines up and, you know, especially this wasn't a huge quilt. It's only like lap size, but even then it's a peace of mind knowing that they're marked and they're marked correctly. Um, when you then get ready to stitch it, you know, it's, a no-brainer at that point. So something big like that, I definitely do the pre-marking. And this is all, you know, again, same thing. All pre-marked. There was a lot of markings because those spaces are really small. So, but I think turned out pretty good lining up from one design element to the other. Yeah, and again, I was trying to go for a crisp look to emphasize the the design, the piece design, mm -hmm. and let the quilting be in the background. That was the goal for that. Well, the other thing too with all those lines, a lot of times, you know, this is solid fabric. Mm -hmm. So it kind of makes sense. I know a lot of people don't like to mark, but it makes sense to mark it because then you know, in this case, the lines need to look like they're traveling, you know, behind the other one. When it's a print, then I don't think you have to worry so much because it's... They're it's, more forgiving, too, prints. Yeah, I mean, it's more it's Yeah. That's so, a good point. Yeah, like your backing fabric. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, like the lines aren't as noticeable on the busy print, right? Mm -hmm. So... Same thing again. Um, zoom in on that one. All the lines because the spacing is is different in some of those areas. And now I stitch those circles freehand just in case oh, you are so. They look like they're only. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm pretty confident I can get them because you know they're kind of just to add a design element, and it's really not that noticeable. But yeah, all the other lines were pre-marked because again, they're like half inch and some quarter inch. You know, if you touch the line, if you went over the line, you went too far. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think some of those free, sometimes freehand, it's depending on how long you've been doing little circles like that, you develop your own, yeah. um, size like this is just how big i do it successfully if that yeah. makes sense you know and then like if someone would ask me to do them a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger yeah not so great because that's not my standard your circle mm -hmm. yeah. or pebble yeah so this this is probably the most difficult thing 
ruler wise that I ever did. Um, because it was all, I mean, there's other than the fail, there was nothing that wasn't a ruler. So, you know, and circle yeah, the little circle background thing was really cool, but that was like switching out between a zillion different rulers just to do each one. Granted, it was everywhere, so it became a habit. You know, I had them lined up there, and you'd pull one in, use it, push it out of the way, grab the next one. Um, and those little circles that are kind of by themselves there, I used that template, Ava, half of it, just because I can't – the inside thing is weird to me. I, I just mm – -hmm. yeah, and they're still not perfect because – well, but again, for this particular quilt, I don't think it, you know, it's not the first thing you look at. It's a really cool add to all the other straight lines, you know, but I don't think anyone would really look to see if they're perfectly symmetrical for the simple fact that they're floating on there, you know, they're not connected. So it's a lot less noticeable. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that was that was probably the hardest ever. That's probably my favorite quilt of yours thus far that I've that you've you know done. So much going on. Mm -hmm. And that's that. Oh. So did you um keep track of your hours on that quilt? Um I did actually. It really isn't that long. I want to say maybe 35 hours. Including your marking? Mm -hmm. How big is that? Uh, maybe like 52 by 63. Something like that. Not too big. No. And the longest thing really was all that scribble mm -hmm. fill, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I did last because I was not... And I actually didn't mark all of it because some parts of it, the circles, I had no clue what I was going to do in them and I couldn't think of anything. So those were the last thing. And then it was just like, whatever, I'm putting these lines in here because I'm done with done. it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's not my favorite quilt, but I don't know. I love it. I like it. The other one's still my favorite one though. So this too, this was kind of hard for me because these brown, I just don't use a lot of template, shape template things. So those circles, you know, and they had to be kind of perfect. And so I think for me, the problem is I like these really stark geometric things. And if you're going to stitch those, they really need to be pretty good, I guess, because if one of those circles wobbled too much, <laughs> you would like notice it right now. Um, so, I don't know. I just, I don't know. <laughs> that one was kind of hard. Fun. And those little hexagons were just free handed. Mm -hmm. um, and then this, this is just, you know, I was just playing with borders and believe it or not, you know, what I love more than any single thing about using a ruler is that as long as you can stitch one line with a ruler, you can make a straight line. You can stitch stuff like this because there's nothing in there that's not just a straight line. Mm -hmm. and it actually is continuous mm -hmm. from one side to the other. So my only problem is when it, when it comes to the, like on your triangle points there on the corner, I get a thought in the middle and I go a little, like a little bit past that mark line or I stop right before it. And yeah. Yeah. Mine are that way too. That's no, why no. I like matching thread. Cause then <laughs> you're full of it. They are all perfect. No, they're not. <laughs> they definitely are not. Apparently my thoughts make more of a speed bump than yours. <laughs> <laughs> the worst is when someone comes in or something or the dog, I feel something on my leg and I jump because I don't <laughs> It's Otis sitting there like wanting something. Yeah. I thought it was a giant spider. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> if you have spiders that big, we all need to worry. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
you know, it's like when you see a mouse in your house and then for a week, you feel like you just saw something. Yeah, everything is a mouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was that a mouse? Oh, it was a piece of fuzz. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this is the same thing. I mean, I, I just love the challenge of one line. It's all just one line. Mm -hmm. And you can get something like that. I, I love the challenge of it, I guess, is what. And then again, it's not perfect. But it's, I try. Pretty cool. Yeah, it cool. looks perfect for my seat. Yeah, it's not. I'm looking right at. Go ahead, you can change it. You're looking right at you. Where you know there's competition. I gotta find it now. <laughs> oh, I gotta switch. <laughs> and the same with this. This is just, you know, as a block design. And it really doesn't take. It's not hard because. All, all I did was stitch a couple of arrow shapes and then just echo it. So it, it's not hard. It's just a little time. And concentration. Well, yeah, and that's probably for me is the funniest thing because I have zero patience. Yeah, but you, you can wow. hyper focus. Like I can hyper focus on cutting. If you give me scissors and cut, done. But oh yeah, like applique trimming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is the same. I can just go as slow as I need to. And it's really weird because I don't know why, because I can't do that with anything else, nothing. So there's hope, I'll keep practicing and I'll get a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, you know, just, oh, there's circles though, because they were weird shapes that I didn't have a template for. So that's one other thing we didn't talk about. So, you know, a lot of times, even to stitch a circle, you can use a straight roller. You don't need to have, we'd all be broke if we had like- Every top. single shape, yeah. Right, I mean. That's, I call it rocking the roller, cause you just- Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And even if you have not the right size circle too, you can just, you just have to keep mm -hmm. pivoting. Fire. <laughs> yeah, and so this, I mean, just, I marked this not thinking about how I was going to stitch it because I didn't have a ruler that matched any of these things. Mm -hmm. So I had probably, oh my gosh, I bet you I had eight or nine different rulers. The OG Karen was one of them because I marked it with your OG on the outside there. Mm -hmm. But clearly, that's way bigger than the ruler. So it worked good because I was able to get that weird, that initial curve coming off of the big arc mm -hmm. with that ruler, even though it wasn't really the ruler for that. So, so generally, I, I decide what I'm going to quilt by what I have to quilt it. This kit was a dumb idea. I didn't think about it. But usually I'll pick, if I'm going to put circles, then I know I have that size template. So we're good. I can use that. Do you have a name for this quilt? No, it's just a class sample. You know, up in here, can you see my cursor? Yes. Mm -hmm. Up in here, this little circle with the cross hatch inside. You know what that reminds me of is, is houses that have that peak up at the top and then they have that. Oh yeah, that little one. Sometimes there's a like a half circle window or a full mm -hmm. circle that's just like it's not even a window, but that's mm -hmm. what that reminds me of. That kind of detail. Little porthole window. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, I'm up. No coffee. Okay. You're up. No coffee. <laughs> Put that coffee down. Okay. <laughs> this is actually my sample for the OG rollers. And it doesn't even show like half of what they can do just by place them down in different directions. But they're my favorite. That's why I made them. <laughs> it's like a sampler. It is a sampler. Because everybody sees the ruler and like, well, what do you do with it? Whatever you want. Because Sharon, zoom in on the top, like those three little ones. The center one is exactly what I designed the ruler for at first. Now, can you scroll up? See where they're all just stacked in one row? 
the second yes. one. That's right here. The, yeah, the one above that. See where they're just. Oh, oh yeah. That's oh, what yeah. I was looking for. And then I designed the one ruler and I said, well, maybe I should do it in different sizes. So, yeah. They look like those tree or Christmas tree ornaments. Ornaments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fashioned ones. Very cool. Yeah. And oh, this whole quilt was ruler work, but this, this, this one circle, the background of that star took way, way too long, but it turned out really good. Did you mark it? Yes. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I was going to say, if you didn't, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that good. Okay. <laughs> but I went over budget on this quilt. Only on this block. I was good up until then, but I said it, it made such an amazing, like, secondary behind mm -hmm. that star that I had to do it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes it's worth it to just do the harder thing, right? Yes, it is. And this is another one. And I like to use rulers to make what's not there. You know, like, there was no sashing on this quilt, so I added the, the, the I guess, border stops and that sashing with just ruler work. And then I added the OGs for little cornerstone things. And even on the outside edge, it was just the applique. These are all client quilts now. It was just the applique. So I just took the curved ruler and connected everything in the background. So that's, that's what I said. You know, rulers make, they, they create more design on a quilt top. Yeah. And there's probably a better way to say that than what I did, but. <laughs> And it's hard to see in this picture, but um, that's those circles. That's the, the half circles that did that in the blue section. And it created so much texture. But I didn't use them the way they're supposed to. I did half, 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 and came back half, 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 the, the opposite way. But What's in between them there that's making them pop up? Straight line, just yeah. straight line quilting with the curvy ends. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. so this client actually likes to test me by giving me the most print fabrics at one time and wants lots of texture. So there's a lot of prints. <laughs> there's a lot of texture too, but some of it, is, I mean like, and I don't think this was like a true photo. Like I didn't take it outside and get the light perfect, and, but you can still see the texture. But that that must drive you must have driven your eyes crazy that well I could not a fabric and then quilt dots on it or circles on I it. I quilt at nighttime so I can create a lot more shadows. You yeah. know, so I do a lot of shadow quilting. And on a busy fabric like that, unless you do that really dense um, background fill around that, those circles, they just wouldn't pop out at all. You have to, if you're going to do something like that, create that yeah. texture on a busy print. Yeah. It's like you can barely see the quilting in the green section because it's even busier. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Maybe I a challenge, that. that's for sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So remember that um, the, uh, this is the little cable that it oh. makes this, in that black section. And I just love that. So Yeah, they're like the ovals. Yeah, little ovals. And then I found out after I did this quilt, well, I did it by mistake on this quilt, but I had to rip it out. <laughs> but if you, if you stitch one and then overlap it, you get like the interlock chain look. So, mm -hmm. so I use them a lot. Oh, it's nice because those ovals are like the same size as the base of the the points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they Make get a little off because like that one, that one I messed up on. I can see it. <laughs> That's the problem. Needed, you always know what you. Yeah, well, that quilt had so much going on, and that the black stashing was the only thing that was consistent through it. So that had to have you know some sort of consistent quilting in it. Okay. So this one's like all ruler work and I, this was like an 18 inch border. So I, I love when, when clients do that, they give me all that space to fill up. 
And there's big mistakes in that. So I had to incorporate the changes halfway through. <laughs> I quilted that same quilt some years back, but it didn't have that big board on it. I think she got tired from painting all the, <laughs> the blocks. I think she just wanted to make it like a bed quilt, you know? So, it, but this was a nice fabric. It was um, almost like a woven, I don't know what the word is. But it was, you know, remember that Honest Burger? Is that how you say that? Honest mm -hmm. Osna, yeah. yeah. Osna Burger? It was like a really... It's for clothing. Is that like what it's for? Heirloom clothing, yes. I thought you said Honest Burger at first. <laughs> An Honest <laughs> Burger. <laughs> you must be hungry. <laughs> yeah, I, <am>. <laughs> <laughs> I may have said an Honest Burger. <laughs> but it was, it was like a, a real... It was a neat fabric. So the quilting really showed on that as well. <clears throat> and there's tons of OGs in there. And this, this is what I love about curved rulers because this was a, um, a raffle quilt for one of the guilds across the state. And it was so square looking. So I said, how can I take all this? Because it's too square looking. So just by using the curved rulers, it softened up all those sashings and it's not so square looking anymore. Or linear, whatever the word is. I'm not good with words. Oh, you know what's cool? I like what you did in these so that you didn't have to do a stop and start inside. That's continuous. Oh, yeah. 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 Clever. <laughs> if there's a way to do it with one start and stop, I'm going to find it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's pretty. Yeah, I really like this. Good. It's a, it's a Dresden. I've done one of these. Dresden, uh, Dresden flower or something. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, All right, okay. <laughs> now you can have your coffee. <laughs> Not right. <laughs> so yeah, like I said before, when I think templates, I think drawing. So this picture is um, one of the templates that I use that has uh, a whole bunch of squares on it that I mentioned that my, I had my hubby make for me. Um, and they're all in half inch increments. So like geometrically, they fit in any space that I want. And I can use them to make a big square and then add an echo to it. So that helped me make the sashing mm -hmm. design throughout that whole big, big quilt. I remember this. One. Remember <laughs> that one? Yeah, you helped me on this one over the phone. You That's did. I, was, I had boring. some. I picked Karen's brain as to what to do in a couple spots and. Uh, yeah, it's nice to have talented people as friends, that's for sure. I love that border. Yeah, I was happy with that, uh, how that came out too. And and so when I think of templates as well, and I had, I think I have another quilt that I'll show you um, how those are made. Because I again, I just like draw a spine and cut it out. So that way I make sure when I put it in each section, it's the same. Oh, there it is. It says that it's a different quilt, but the same idea of, drawing uh, a design and then cutting it and then I just have a drawer full of them and I just pull them out the more you make the more you have to pull out for different quilts and then I can just figure out which one fits the space and so that helps create that so it just helps you have that symmetry yeah this one's all ruler works all arcs and straight lines and I don't even know what this fabric is. I just bought it at this, um, it was on sale at a fabric store. It's kind of like a shimmer to it. And well, I, it says unknown contents. <laughs> unknown. <laughs> unknown. There was no, <laughs> no label <laughs> on it whatsoever. Yeah, and it's based. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, material that has not been seen on this planet before. <laughs> uh, and it's based off of a, a sacred geometry design. And I quilted it with a really heavy, I think it was like a 12 weight with a, a really fine uh, polyester thread beside it so that it wasn't the same thread beside the bright shimmery silver one. Mm -hmm. But lots of straight lines and all marked to get that, the, everything to line up in those spaces. 
I typically like a little bit more free motion, but sometimes I want to challenge myself and do more, be like Jody more. <laughs> Where I have some like really like lots of structure and lots of straight lines and precision and yeah. I'm all about the challenge in the first half. And then the second yeah. half what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? I'm just gonna do some free motion here. Or if I make a, a boo-boo with the ruler, then it's like, oh, that's a great spot to add a curl or something. <laughs> No, and I think free motion, you kind of need some because then it, it really showcases the, you know what I mean? Yeah. That it adds. Between the two. For sure. Um, this one is just a little sampler piece from the stencils, the diamonds, and even the feathers were made. I even had uh, paisley shapes. I uh, had them make me paisley shapes in different sizes that um, we used for teaching feathers and making them like big paisley shapes. Um, the same with the curls and stuff and the flowers are all templates and drawn. And then the only thing that was freehand done or hand guided, well, it was all hand guided, but the only thing that wasn't um, template or ruler drawn was like after the fact, um, doing the background quilting and the little pebbles inside here. And otherwise everything else was all pre-marked with templates. Uh, another fun one, just uh, kind of abstract, just plop some shapes down onto a background and then just build in in between them just to have some kind of a, and I think I started with drawing these big lines just to break up that, it almost looks like a lopsided star. Um, it's just a fat quarter, so it's kind of fun to just do stuff like that and experiment and see where it goes. And then this one, I used um, a smaller, like, remember I showed you these ones? Um, then I used my, one of the smaller ones, because you can use the ruler, like the quilting rulers for drawing too. Um, and all I, I marked out using that, but then I didn't actually quilt the spine with the ruler. I just did it freehand after it was drawn in. So sometimes you can use those ones for drawing as well. I think remember when I first started, I think I even used like paper plates in different sizes to draw different art. <laughs> um, and then these pearls in here was all using the, the that ruler. And then I just stopped and added a curl into each one inside the inside the ruler. And I think this is probably a good example of for me where this space was so big and intimidating that I just had to make it smaller. So I had to divide it up. And then once it was made into smaller chunks, then it was like, okay, now I can focus on what to put in here and there. And rulers for defining spaces is to me like one of the best things. So, yeah. And I think that's it. That's all our pictures. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Woohoo. I like seeing your guys' pictures because I see stuff that I've never seen before. Nice. We've been doing okay. it a long time. <laughs> so we hope that y'all have enjoyed talking about, listen to us talk about rulers and templates. Um, and we will see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.